Welcome to the joint meeting of the American Society for Microbiology and the International Society of Chemotherapy here in San Diego for the joint meeting of the Interscience Conference on Antimicrobial Therapy and Chemotherapy and the International Congress of Chemotherapy, ICAC or an ICC here in San Diego. For those, of join, for those of you joining us for the first time, welcome. This is a meeting whose focus is on antibiotic resistance, antibiotic development, and antibiotic stewardship. In addition, we've heard talks about vaccines and we're gonna hear an exciting development today, this afternoon about a new device that is actually gonna deliver an antiviral. This meeting is, um, affords the attendees an unparalleled opportunity to discuss and cross-collaborate on all things antimicrobial. I'm Michael Schmidt from ASM's This Week in Microbiology, and it's my honor to discuss some of the science being presented here at ICC ICAC with the authors who are presenting papers, posters, platform talks at this week's meeting here in San Diego. Uh, we encourage your questions from the audience and through Twitter and our chat room at ASM Live. And please join me in welcoming our next guest, uh, Dr. Miriam Mimi, who is from um, the University of Jean Monnet in Saint-Étienne, France. So Hello. welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so. You have, um, I'm going to take my cheaters on and, and actually highlight what, what you're actually doing. You've developed a silicone vaginal ring mm -hmm. that del will deliver antiviral drugs that will hopefully protect women against the acquisition of HIV. So why don't you um, give us a little bit of the background of this project and then take us next through the methods. So okay. welcome. Thank you. My name is Maria Mimi. I am a Tunisian scientist and uh, I am uh, involved in PhD study in uh, the University of Saint-Étienne uh, in France. So uh, I performed my study at uh, the University of Monastir in Tunisia after getting my baccalaureate for six years as a biotechnologist. And uh, after I had the opportunity to be selected uh, in the uni uh, University of uh, Saint-Étienne to do my PhD in a program, international program, uh, al Edurisi. Uh, so uh, I spent uh, uh, three years in Saint-Étienne in my research and uh, I'm that focused in uh, mucosal microbiology and immunology. That's a fascinating and hot area of, of science today is mucosal microbiology and immunology and you elected to focus on controlling viruses yeah. so what is one of the how did you get started on this particular project uh, so the research on the prevention of HIV uh, infection in young women is uh, uh, the uh, major concern of uh, public health, notably in sub-Saharan uh, Africa, which uh, young uh, uh, women are infected, uh, and uh, the control uh, of uh, um, the, uh, the control of uh, against the HIV and other STA uh, is uh, under the, uh, the control of men, but not the women. For this reason, uh, the, uh, the women are most infected. And yes. often you can say it's almost uh, girls because uh, some of them can be attacked at as early as an age of 12. Yes. And so that was one of the driving forces behind your development of this technology. Yes. With the gap of six, uh, seven uh, years between uh, the infection, uh, the, the contamination of women and men. 
So uh, this problem uh, make us uh, to think about uh, um, a solution and uh, because the vaccine is not yet uh, really uh, an, option. an option, so we thought about uh, uh, to make, uh, to, um, uh, to manufacture antivaginal rings that could be uh, very interesting to prevent against HIV infection, perhaps in other uh, uh, S, uh, S, I, uh, SAT um, infection. So vaginal rings for the delivery of drugs is not a new concept. We've been using vaginal rings to deliver hormones to women to control um, menopause type symptoms. Yes. So how did you get the idea to incorporate antivirals into the silicone rings? Uh, so my supervision, uh, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Professor uh, Bruno Pozzetto, uh, has the opportunity to meet uh, uh, Mr. Blaise Figueroa, Figuero, uh, that is uh, an engineer of silicon, and he was uh, contributed to manufacture uh, the uh, intravaginal ring a string that is used to, for the menopause. Uh, so he. Um, decided to uh, uh, set up uh, this uh, project and uh, to uh, uh, mm, uh, in the place of the uh, hormone uh, to uh, introduce uh, uh, antiviral drugs. And so hormones are chemically very distinct from the antivirals that you investigated. So this was not a trivial problem where you would just mix up the drug from one and pour it into the silicone. You, you had a, a long and, and challenging project to figure out how to put the antivirals into the silicone. Yes, uh, it is uh, really uh, a difference between the hormone and antiviral drugs. With uh, uh, the silicone and hormone, there is no a problem. The release is uh, down. But anti -drug, uh, anti, um, antiviral drugs um, has some chemicals reaction with silicone. So for the first time, uh, we, uh, the release was not uh, enabled. So we try uh, to uh, find a solution and we cooperate with the uh, uh, chemist uh, um, professor uh, Christian Caru who uh, uh, had the opportunity to help us to uh, more understand uh, the problem, uh, the chemicals problem. So after, uh, we can say, two years, I succeed uh, to uh, uh, um, release the, uh, some drugs who was not enabled to release from the silicon. And uh, uh, now we are continue uh, to uh, uh, adding another, uh, other uh, um, drugs, to testing another drugs. So other drugs. the approach was to make certain that the drug as it was released from the silicone was at the proper concentration to inhibit the virus from infecting the woman. Uh, yes, we, um, uh, so after the uh, daily um, measurement of the drug, uh, we uh, use uh, the uh, mass tandem spectrometry to uh, uh, get the idea about the concentration of uh, the drug uh, daily. So uh, the concentration uh, um, seems to be efficient uh, to prevent from uh, HIV and uh, uh, of course uh, uh, HSV because we tested aciclovir. Uh, because uh, um, the, uh, when the women are infected with uh, uh, herpes simplex virus, it is a cofactor to be infected with uh, HIV. So uh, the herpes virus will actually make the woman more vulnerable mm -hmm. to the acquisition of a subsequent um, interaction with an individual who is carrying HIV. So you have two drugs in your silicone ring. You have acyclovir, which will prevent the herpes infection, mm -hmm. and the antiretroviral. Yes. So 
where are you what results did you obtain uh, the results uh, um, we um, we succeed to release uh, these two uh, drugs uh, simul uh, in the same time and uh, the concentration is uh, uh, effic efficient to uh, prevent from these two uh, uh, infection so you were successful in preventing it this was not yet introduced into people this is still a lab study yeah. where you're evaluating the kinetics of release just in in vitro study. in vitro yes because we are, are in the um, uh, preliminary phase so we we would uh, would like to test other drugs and perhaps we will introduce third drug to uh, uh, because our system is uh, three reservoir so until now we succeed to release two uh, kind of drugs so you've released an anti-HIV medication and you've released an anti-herpes medication. Yeah. What's your next drug that you plan to incorporate into the silicone ring? Uh, perhaps it will be an anti-inflammatory uh, uh, medicine because uh, uh, when the mucosa uh, of, um, uh, is uh, uh, inflamed, inflamed. inflamed, it is a cofactor to uh, uh, get the HIV infection too. So inflammation is a, another predisposing factor. And so by having the three cocktail of the herpes, which we know predisposes women, the antiretroviral, which will prevent the acquisition of the infection, as well as the anti-inflammatory, mm -hmm because this ring is going to be inserted where? Where are you going to place this ring? This uh, ring will place it in the uh, vagina of the woman and uh, each woman can uh, place it, it but by themselves so it's not difficult to, uh, uh, to place it and to uh, uh, remove it. Remove it. Uh, but uh, um, uh, for the time we don't uh, test in uh, in vivo so we try to uh, be sure that our uh, intravaginal ring uh, delivery a good concentration and we uh, thinking about uh, the third uh, uh, drug or uh, molecule to finish our uh, uh, system uh, three uh, reservoir so what you have been doing is measuring the concentration over time to make certain that it's still delivering the proper concentration on day one and how long do you anticipate that this ring will remain in place is it one day or do you anticipate that this ring could protect the woman for a longer period of time if she leaves it in for a longer period of time, between two months and three months. We between two and that. three months? Yeah, we succeed to have a really a, a, a fixed concentration daily. So I think it's very uh, interesting that. It's very attractive because you can effectively protect the woman for up to three months. Yeah. And so this has great implications for women's health not mm -hmm. only in the study area that you're engineering this product for but for globally as well yes so how do women perceive this product have you talked with uh, potential um, companies about developing this to see if women would be willing to use uh, a vaginal ring to help them protect themselves from herpes and HIV? Uh, I didn't talk, uh, not yet, with women, but uh, I think when uh, uh, it is a very uh, big problem, so uh, if a person is infected with HIV, a woman, I think she will be, uh, she will accept to uh, to, to, to get this uh, intravaginal ring, because uh, um, uh, it's not, um, um, it, it it is comfortable it it, no, it makes not the woman it's not an irritant yes and it's not toxic because it's uh, made of silicon not so it's not going to be inflammatory over the three-month period it's just yeah. going to effectively be inert 
it's comfortable to 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 wear or to have in yeah. place and so it'll effectively have greater utility yes it's it's comfortable and it's not toxic well that's tremendous that is tremendous news <laughs> so you're watching ASM live here at ICC ICAC and I'd like to invite the audience if they have questions to please uh, attend the microphone and we'll be happy to take your questions. Looks like we're going to get a question from the audience. Uh, yeah, uh, Michael Smith MedPage today. Uh, you said that you that your your product at the moment includes acyclovir. What's the what's the HIV medication? What drug? What's what, the what antiretroviral? Tenofovir. Tenofovir. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's one. Of course, it's been used in micro in my, many microbicide tests. Um, and the next, the, so what's the next step? You, you, you said you wanted to add an anti-inflammatory. Well, that would be nice, but the next step. How do you how do you get how do you get from a product that's now in your lab uh, that appears to look to work? How do you get it from the lab into uh, well, women I around the world? Drop. How do you, how do you move it? How do you move it into into the place where it can actually do some do some good? How do you bring it from the lab? to the clinic. Ah, uh, yes. What's the uh, next step? Uh, so the next, the next step, it will be uh, to uh, be sure that this uh, concentration is efficient. And after, uh, when we uh, try to put the third uh, molecule of uh, antiviral, uh, another antiviral drug, uh, we, tr we have, um, I think we will, um, propose uh, uh, or perhaps other uh, lab, pharmaceutical lab will call us and uh, we will uh, try to um, uh, um, uh, to do uh, in, vi in vivo uh, um, t test. So in other words um, your next step is to add the anti-inflammatory. Yes. And you're going to do the same lab trials where you monitor the concentration of the antiretroviral, the anti-herpes, and the anti-inflammatory over example, time yeah. to make certain that you have the proper dose mm -hmm. for three months. And then the next step is to move it into the clinic yeah. where you will measure the concentration of drug in situ in the vagina, or will you look for the drug in the blood? We, we think we will do that in a macaque. In a macaque? Yeah, before doing in women. So you will move to animal trials next. Animal trials, yes. So you will then actually challenge them with um, uh, a, a virus, probably a herpes, and then a, yeah. a retrovirus and the anti-inflammatory and you will be able to do the pathology. Yes. So I think we will try it, it in macaque and after if we will have a good result for uh, prevention and we will try it in uh, women. Uh, perhaps uh, we will have a collaboration with, uh, the, with the Professor Salim Abdul Karim who is in Durban, South Africa the heat of Capriza 00 for 4. So it sounds like exciting times. Yeah. You're, you're moving from the bench to an animal trial and then ultimately to a, a clinical trial. Yes. So very, very exciting. Very exciting. Another question from the audience. Thank you. Uh, Nasser al Ansari from Qatar. I just have one comment uh, and then a question. The comment is about the young girls, as you mentioned earlier. Uh, they are probably uh, will not benefit from this because uh, young virgins will probably will not be using the rings, I presume. Uh, but uh, that, that, you know, it's usually sexually active, more mature women. And that's good. But m my question is related uh, to the using the antiviral drug. Uh, isn't there any worry about uh, uh, increasing resistance to, to the drug and why don't you uh, use a safe antiseptic instead of antiviral drug? Because it's, it's, it's really something that's not internal, it's just in the vaginal fluid. Uh, look, uh, look up. Um, okay. So you've asked 
two very provocative questions. Three questions. Yes. <laughs> so I, I will. Uh, I try to answer uh, the first uh, to begin with the first uh, uh, question. So when we say uh, young women in South Africa. Uh, uh, yes, they can uh, get the uh, antivaginal rings because this woman, with this woman, uh, how sh she is infected by the violence. So they are, I think, not virgin. So they can introduce the antivaginal rings to prevent themselves, uh, or to, because the antivaginal ring in with the time can be uh, not uh, um, prevention but treatment because they will enter of the systemic blood at the long time. And uh, uh, the second qu question? Uh, the, why just one drug? Why, why just only tenofovir? Won't that result in resistance to, to HIV? Oh, using an antiseptic, I'm sorry. Using an antiseptic, an anti antiviral side, as opposed to the antiviral drug. To avoid resistance, uh, a, a, a disinfectant. Um, you you mean to do, to use uh, another uh, antiviral? Uh, no, drug? An, an, an antiseptic like. In, yeah, antiseptic. In, uh, okay, an antiseptic uh, in the uh, the third uh, reservoir. Yes. Why not? We can. Okay. To inactivate the virus using an antiseptic rather than something that will specifically target the eukaryotic cell to prevent the viral from replicating inside our cells. So you kill the virus before it enters our cells. Uh, I don't know if it can be uh, uh, good. I don't know. I think it's. I, I, I don't, uh, we don't thought about that. It's probably whether or not it will be damaging to the vaginal lining yes, because I of mucosa. Yes, because the vaginal uh, mucosal uh, uh, vaginal muco mucosa, it's uh, um, it's inflammatory. So antiseptic, perhaps it will uh, be a co-factor cool to uh, get uh, the other S uh, STA. So. I think it presents a, a whole slew of, of new challenges to be able to deliver an, an antiseptic that is antiviral to inactivate the virus before it infects our cells. It I, do, I really don't understand very much this uh, idea, but uh, I will think uh, about that. Other questions? All right. Well. Uh, this brings our ASM Live session to a close. I'd like to, to thank our guest here for um, coming to San Diego to join us here for ICAC Live. Uh, we really uh, uh, appreciate that. Um, I'd like to thank you, our audience, for questions as we conclude this session of ASM Live here at ICC ICAC. And this concludes all of our episodes here, but if you wish to review any of them, they're all archived for you at ASM Live uh, at microbeworld.org. And thanks again. And be sure to take the opportunity to follow us at, follow us at TWIM, TWIV, or TWIP, or our newest offering, the Microbe Magazine, all available for you at iTunes or microbeworld.org. Until next time, I'm Michael Schmidt for TWIM, and thank you for all for attending ICC ICAC. Thank you. Thank you. Once you're in the BSL4 space, the only way you can get out is to go through a chemical shock. It's an unusual room, never seen anything like this. Anybody who has access to this facility first has to go through an R scan. The HIPAA filters filter the air coming out of the facility and that will remove bacteria, viruses, anything that might constitute any kind of risk, right?
remember this building is, is basically a second building inside the main building.